I'm Meredith and there's Apollo back there getting ready for a roll I think oh there he goes and this is have horse will travel the podcast and YouTube channel and today I am going to talk about horse training and I cannot see a thing so let's go stand somewhere where I'm not blind um, what do you think, Apollo? Is that better? Oh, so dirty. So, oh, oh boy. Look at this mess now. This is Apollo's tail. Oh my gosh. Why do I even bother brushing this horse? Seriously. Whole blackberry brambles and branches in there now. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna stand over here in the filtered sun. There we go. All right. Anyway, so this is um, a week late. So if you've been trying to uh, watch along as I post them and you were so eagerly awaiting another episode, apologies, the weather was bad. And I did not really feel like freezing and recording out here with my co-host Apollo. Um, you know. So, anyway, I'm here now. Um, and it is glorious out here. It poured buckets this week. And everything out here is just soggy. Apollo's a muddy mess. And... It's shedding season. Oh my gosh, the horses are just... <sighs> the hair coming off of this horse is just amazing. It's, it's surprising that he's not bald already and that he still has most of his winter coat. Like, you can't even tell that he's been shedding out like he's been shedding out. Let's go back over there so I can demonstrate this for those of you watching on YouTube. Let's go check out this amazing fur coat. Look at this. What am I doing, Apollo? He's like, why are you petting me like that? That's weird. But he's got so much hair. And it's just... Oh my gosh. It's so early in shedding season. And... He's not even close to sh finishing shedding out. So anyway, it's um, it's the yuck season at the barn. Mud and horse hair everywhere on everything at all times. Um, so it's, uh, you know, but it's beautiful out here. So who cares? No complaining on a day like this. After all of that rain and uh, the week before that it snowed. And yeah, it's uh, it's it's just just a magical day out here. So what also made this? I'm gonna shut up about the weather. I promise. Um, but what particularly made today good was that apart from it being perfect weather, also I thought it was gonna be cold, and it's not obviously warm because I'm wearing a warm hat, but it's not cold. So, um, anyway, the, uh, today, Apollo had his first riding lesson, well, we had our first riding lesson together in years. I don't think we've had an instructor since, um, before the cross-country ride, so probably... 2016 maybe oh my gosh five years since we've had a lesson together the horses are going this way so let's go too um 
yeah. So it's been a long time. And so we had a riding lesson today. It was a group lesson with uh, <clears throat> three other ladies and their horses that we tend to go trail riding with on Sundays, typically. And uh, so we all had a riding lesson today together and it was great. It was just a basic uh, horsemanship, um, not even English versus Western. It was just come as you are, use whatever saddle you use. And we're just going to practice the basics because really when it comes down to it, whatever you're riding, dressage, uh, jumper, endurance, western pleasure, whatever, it's all going to be the same. Whoops, let's not show that on camera. Give Paula some privacy for pooping. Um, it's all going to be the same basic uh, stuff, you know, the same um, balance for the rider, quiet hands, um, same sort of like, obviously your leg's going to be in a slightly different position, but more or less it's going to be the same sort of leg cues and whatever for all the basic stuff. And then the horses need to do the same basic stuff, you know, they need to go faster, they need to go slower. Um, you can post in a western saddle, so even that, you know, uh, I would use an endurance saddle, so it's kind of like a cross. It's more western than English, but it's got a couple of things on it that are more like English than a western. So I can post in it anyway. I do post in it. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, we were just doing basic stuff. And aren't those two horses so cute? Oh my gosh, they have to graze nose to nose because they love each other. Um, so we were just doing arena stuff and I almost never ride him in the arena, but I really need to start doing that more because um, he's getting kind of fat. But even apart from that, he is... Um, you know, he could benefit from the, from the work, from the training, from the practice at, you know, doing what I tell him to do when I tell him to do it. What a concept. So anyway, we had a lesson today and it was really fun. I was not sure how that would go because like I said, we almost never ride in the arena. It's basically always um, on the trail, down the dirt roads here, um, whatever it's going to be like that. And, uh, so, you know, I, if the weather's bad, I'm not going to go in the arena, even though it's covered, I'm just going to stay home <laughs> where the weather's nice and let someone else take care of my horse. So anyway, um, I've become that kind of horse person. Not there's anything wrong with that. Just saying. So anyway, um, we did a lot of um, walk trot transitions. We did a lot of leg yielding, uh, which for you new horse people or non-horse people is when you tell your horse which way to go with your legs instead of or very limitedly with your hands, your reins. Um, so it's a little bit different maneuver, um, than just turning with the reins. So we did a lot of that. Um, it was really good. So I really like that kind of stuff. This, even though we don't typically ride in the arena, I have done a lot of things with him for training that are the same sort of things that you would do in an arena 
but I do them um, on the road. Um, you know, when we were traveling on the road, then we would do all sorts of training and refresher training and, um, you know, keeping all these things sharp in his brain and sharp in my brain and whatnot um, on the road. And so basically we would have a, an arena that was, assuming there was no traffic and it was a quiet back road, we would have a, an arena that was the width of a road and the length of however far it was till the next intersection. And so, you know, it was a really strangely shaped arena. And so some of the things we did today, uh, like the leg yielding, where you'd um, move closer to the edge of the arena and further from the edge of the arena, um, you know, just go down like a zigzag going down the arena. Um, I do that on the road. And um, so Apollo's pretty good at that. But then some things, like, um, like obviously I can turn him if I need to turn around and go back the way we came, then I just turn, uh, but I never really worried about mm, turning on the forehand or turning on the backhand, you know? It was just, you just turn because you needed to turn around and go back the way we came from. And so trying to get Apollo to step, uh, you know, telling him which legs to move when to turn around. Um, is he keeping his front legs still and spinning his butt around, which is a turn on the forehand? Or is he keeping his back legs still and pivoting on his back feet so his front legs swing around and his hips stay still, which is a turn on the the, um, oh my gosh, turn on the hind quarters, turn on the back, whatever. Everyone calls things different anyway, so I'm just going to make stuff up. Um, and, uh, that's, that's definitely different. Like, I've done it before, but it's not something we really have practiced because there hasn't been any need. Um, so, um, that was good. He is not good about cantering or loping, depending on what you like to call it. Uh, he doesn't do things faster than a trot without having a tantrum about it, which on the road was great because I did not need to go faster than that. In fact, I did not want to go faster than that. That would have been a safety issue. Uh, that would have been not good with all our packs banging around and so and with all that extra weight of the packs uh, I didn't want to be going faster than a trot and really even trotting was not a big thing we'd do it sometimes but again all that weight of the bags um, bouncing on him is not great so um so we would walk and trot on the trail and not really canter or lope ever uh, unless he got scared of something and he'd maybe go a couple strides at a gallop um, and then I'd get him stopped again. But that doesn't count. <laughs> and so um, I've not really cantered a horse except for in um, Dusty Dog Farms in... New Hampshire, in Keene, New Hampshire. I was invited to attend a riding clinic there for jumpers, and I'm not a jumper. Hunter jumper. I'm not really sure if it was hunter or jumper or both, but anyway, it was for really beginners, which was me, so um, it wasn't really either. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, that was cool, and also we did canter. Um, on the lesson horses, not on Apollo. He did not attend that clinic. Uh, he just watched. And um, that's the only time that I've cantered on purpose in the last five years, apparently. Um, so, interesting. Um, 
I have to say, I've done some crazy things on horses. On this horse in particular. But cantering in an arena like a normal person, riding a normal horse, I don't know. <laughs> we didn't do it today. He was not ready. He was like, you want what? Um, no, we don't do that. We just spent the last several years not doing that and this is not something that is okay. And so there's going to be some uh, groundwork that I'm gonna have to do in before I ask him to do that while I'm riding. So I wanted to talk today now that I've rambled on for 15 minutes about my riding lesson and um, oh I horse hair all over my face. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, it doesn't matter how good of a rider you are or how new of a rider you are or how casual of a rider you are if you're just, you know, playing around on the weekends or once a month or whatever uh, with your horse, that's okay. Lessons are still awesome and you should definitely consider taking a lesson, at least occasionally, um, very insightful. So, um, like I know Apollo really well. I think it would be fair to say I know Apollo better than most people know their horses, just because we've spent so many miles and hours and, oh my gosh, shedding season. Oh, excuse me. I'm, uh, I got horse hair all over my face and it tickles. <sighs> oh my gosh. <sighs> <sighs> I can see it on the corner of my eye and I can't get it off. Um, anyway, um, <sighs> what was I saying? Oh, so I know my horse really well. We've spent a lot of time together. I know all of his quirks. He knows what he can get away with. And so, you know, I train him, he trains me. It's kind of a, sometimes a bad circle. Um, part of why we weren't able to get up to the canter today because of uh, years of this um, not being a thing and, and uh, some other factors. So um, anyway, um, but having a, someone who doesn't know his quirks but knows horsemanship uh who's a good instructor to watch me ride him watch him react to me and be like okay here's the deal here's what is going wrong and i totally agreed with her 100 percent which was nice because like i kind of already knew those things were problems and I was just kind of accepting, I guess, of them or like, well, I don't know what to do about them or it doesn't really matter, so I'll just put up with them. But uh, she had some advice on what to do. And so now I'm motivated to actually work on our, our uh, hangups. And maybe in a couple weeks, I'll be cantering my horse again like a normal um, rider. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> um, but not on the roads, never on the roads, um, just in the arena. So that'll be fun. Um, <clears throat> so before the ride, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, training the adventure horse. Yes, that was the note I had made for today to talk about training the adventure horse and um, the so anyway I talked about it a little bit already but before the ride way way back I cannot believe how long it's been since Apollo came into my life um 2004 so this is 2021 um seven years Whew. wow Seven years January, so it's been a little over seven years now. Um, so, 
way back then when I got him, I had this idea that I wanted to do my cross country ride. And I wasn't sure at that point if it was possible, but I knew I wanted to do it. And so I was training him with that in mind. But at that time he had very, very, very little training. He had very basic, very basic, very green horse training. And so um, at that time, I did a lot of groundwork. And now that I'm taking lessons again, I get to do more groundwork because groundwork is awesome and it is a good way to teach a horse something that it might be easier to explain to them without being on their back. And it's also a good way to teach them things without having to worry about falling off of their back, um, which is the problem right now, um, that he's a little bit uh, wild. <laughs> when I ask him to go faster than a trot, he's like, okay, and he just bucks and runs. And uh, so I need a safe space uh, to, learn, to teach him how to go faster than a trot nicely and what I'm actually asking him to do is not um, act like a racehorse or a rodeo bronc or whatever or some weird combination um, but just to gently pick up the pick up the pace pick up his feet and just go faster but not that fast so um, We'll be working in the round pen with that and uh, just working on what is a good um, upward transition, as it's called. Um, what's a good way to go faster than a trot and what is not a good way to go faster than a trot. And then a good way to go from the canter back to the trot and what is not a good way. And so we're going to be working on these transitions. Um, but what I was going to say about back in the day um, when I first got him and really for the first three years that I had him um, was all training to prepare for the ride, right? So um, the first two years were all groundwork. I could put the saddle on him, but I didn't get in the saddle. Um, it was all... That's a lot of groundwork. I know that's really weird. Most people don't spend that long unless their horse is really young and too, too young to be ridden. But he wasn't. He was six. He was almost six when I got him. So um, he was a handful though. He didn't, he's still a handful. Um, some things never change. Um, so he was, um, difficult. <laughs> He's still difficult. Uh, but anyway, um, we did a lot of groundwork. We did a lot of round pen stuff, a lot of lunge line stuff. I didn't have any fancy equipment. Like I like looking at those, um, I don't even know what they're called. Um, sir, single, sir, something like that. Anyway, it's like uh, just a band that goes around their belly just behind their shoulder. Um, and you can run the reins from, you know, from their bit through that and then out to your hands. So the, um, it's really cool. It helps with uh, the direction of the pull on the bit. So it's really good for training young horses or, you know, green horses to what the rein commands mean without actually sitting on their back. So cool. Real clever. But I didn't have anything fancy like that. So I made up stuff. Um, I did a lot of, um, you know, once he, I taught him voice commands first. And so I could just tell him walk, trot canter because he did it better back then 
um, whoa, and he would just, and, uh, G and ha, so he turned left and right, although I forgot what they meant, and so I taught him G was left and ha was right, but it's actually supposed to be the other way around, so if he was ever to become a carriage horse and, uh, someone else that, like, actually drives horses, told him which way to go, he'd get it backwards, because that's my fault. Um, so that's pretty funny. But anyway, he knows what G and Ha means to us. And so um, I taught him all those things on the ground, uh, standing next to him or in a round pen or whatever. And then I'd put the bridle on with the bit and teach him um, like he'd had it on before I got him. So he knew, like he knew how to have a saddle put on and how to accept the bit and all that kind of stuff. But he just wasn't practiced at it. Um, and he'd barely been ridden. And so like I'd tell him, okay, step or turn G or turn Ha. And I'd pull the rein standing next to him and just walking at his shoulder. And then he could learn it that way. So anyway, that's really, really basic. Um, horse training stuff. I didn't really do anything in the beginning that was specifically for the adventure horse, right? It was just basic. You need to have really solid, really solid foundation for um, being ridden because we're going to be riding in some real sketchy places. And so he needed to be able to respond to what I said and understand what I was telling him without any confusion and without any hesitation because it could be a life or death situation if there was like something really bad on the road about to happen. It's it's uh, much riskier than being in an arena of course um, with cars and whatnot. So um, anyway, um, apart from just making sure he was really solid I was also trying to do a lot of um, desensitization. Um, so, like, I'd put a tarp on him and he'd wear it like a cape, have him walk over the tarp, and have him, like, I'd put things on his back and then knock him off his back. Uh, lots of things with ropes around his legs and making sure he was okay with that and it wasn't going to freak him out. Um, generally just moving big, you know, like just like not being careful to move cautiously and not scare the horse because I needed him to be just naturally not scared. Um, and because in the real world on the road, there would be things that happen that the horse isn't going to be trained for and they just need to be generally okay with weird things happening. So I just do weird things to him. Not so much the costumes. That was later. Did I even put costumes on him then? I don't think I did. Hmm. Simpler times. Anyway, um, just uh, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and then obstacle courses as much as I could set them up in the arena. There was a, um, a plank that was like a bridge, um, but no railing. And so he'd walk over the plank, over the bridge, um, that kind of stuff. That never bothered him, so it wasn't really a challenge. Uh, I brought my bicycle out and my trainer at that time, uh, this is once he had started to be ridden. Um, she rode him down the road and I bicycled down the road and I'd like swoop at him as fast as I could and slam on the brakes on the gravel and skid out on purpose so that the gravel would kick up at him and make a big noise right behind his butt. Um, I'd get, like I'd bike as quick as I could, as, like close up to him. Um, or cut him off in the front. Um, he didn't really care, <laughs> so that was lucky. Um, 
but I did try to at least make sure he was okay with bicycles because I knew it would be on a lot of bike paths and uh, along roads where cyclists would also be um, in the bike lane along the road so needed to make sure we were good with that um, and that was fine that was good um, I only took him on the road a few times before we started out actually going along the road I uh, just went on a little loop out and it wasn't even a busy road like when I left here the road that the stable is on I thought was busy like I thought oh this is not necessarily busy but like treacherous um, because it's um, it's narrow and windy and it doesn't have a shoulder in most places close to the stables later like closer into town it does but um, out here it's very narrow very winding cars go way faster than they ought to you know like a normal road as it turns out and um, so I was a little I was like oh well this is a scary road I'm a little scared about riding him on this road but this is gonna be great training because you know it's a scary bad road turns out this road is so easy peasy compared to so many that we were on oh my gosh but anyway I did ride him on that a few times um, and see how he did around what I thought at the time was traffic and turns out to be nothing um, I think it's fine it's fine um, so anyway that kind of stuff um tried to do a lot of trust building stuff with him like um join up um natural horsemanship whatever you want to call it stuff um so that he would look to me and trust me and i i mean it was good i'm glad i did that but at the same time like we got so much of that out on the road and most of his trust in me now is just because of all the time we spent on the road together and not so much because of the training but I'm sure it didn't hurt uh, so um, yeah I guess that's about all I have to say about training for now I'm sure I'll think of more things and we can have another training talk later. But anyway, I guess just to summarize, um, training the adventure horse, I would say, is mostly about having a good solid foundation and then also desensitization because you need them to listen to you and also you need them to um, be calm in unfamiliar and scary situations. So anyway, looks like something exciting is going on back there. They're hoping it's food. It might be food. They're pretty sure it's food. Those silly horses. Um, and uh yeah so anyway thanks for watching or listening and i will be back in a few weeks with another episode and uh, and so yeah i hope you enjoyed and come back for the next one so until then bye bye